Thanks for coming back to Law & Crime. If you're just joining us, I'm Terry Austin. For this segment, we head to Sarasota, Florida for a civil case against John Hopkins All Children's Hospital. The Kowalski family is suing the hospital for over $200 million in punitive and compensatory damages after they claim that the hospital staff wrongly reported child abuse. Maya Kowalski was admitted to the hospital in 2016 upon experiencing a flare-up in her complex regional pain syndrome. In the past, the family used ketamine infusions to treat Maya's pain, but the hospital saw this high dosage request as a red flag. Now, during Maya's three-month stay, she became custody of the state and her mother, Beata, was no longer there and able to visit her. After 87 days of being physically separated from her daughter, Beata died by suicide. Now, plaintiff Jack Kowalski, he filed a suit against the hospital on behalf of his wife and his children. Now, when court was last in session, Maya's gifted program school teacher, Jackie Dieter, took the stand to testify on behalf of the plaintiffs. Now, Dieter visited Maya when Beata was not allowed to, and she continued to teach Maya to the best of her ability, both of which brought on certain hardships that she outlined in her direct examination. Let's take a listen. And, and over the three months that Maya was there, did you continue to provide updates to Beata, or did that become difficult? Yeah, it became too difficult. Can you explain a little bit to the jury? Um, Maya was just really desperate to see her. And I just think when I would talk about school and what we did, or if I took her to the craft room, or, or there was a fall festival one Saturday when I went up there. Um, and I think I kind of um, knew Jack was seeing her, so Jack was able to give her the head, because she was really sad, she cried, she was desperate when I would then call and talk about me taking my head to the fall festival. It was just, it was too much and she so desperately wanted um, to be the one to see Maya that I, I bet I probably called her for the first six weeks, but I think the last month it just became too hard for me to, and we would do little summaries. I would give Maya a little summary of what she was doing for homework each week and what we were working on, and I would like forward, I think, those to Beata, but um, yeah, that, that became too hard. Too difficult to keep giving the other updates. Yes, because I was the one seeing her instead of her so mom. So when Mrs. Shepler um, couldn't go, she went maybe two or three times, and then for some reason they, they weren't allowing her in there. I, I filled both of our positions. I would try to go twice a week. Twice a week? Mm -hmm. And were you aware as to whether or not Maya was receiving any other instruction, fifth grade? teacher or anything like that? So, um, I don't know how long she'd been here at the time. She'd been there a month. Um, she'd been here uh, two weeks or so at this point. At this point. So, it was at the beginning of October. So, no, the few times that I'd gone at, at that point, and at that point I think Mrs. Shepler had gone once or twice, um, we couldn't f figure out if she had any kind of teacher um, allocated to her from the, the um, hospital or um, that county. And so I, I couldn't get anybody to um, give me that information. So the social worker that would escort me couldn't provide me any of information on whether Maya was getting additional work um, to do. And so I had talked to the IT guy, uh, Dave uh, Chamberlain um, Calamari, um, and he had worked out me bringing a computer up there and that we would Skype just like we had um, at school. Um, and then when I got there with that computer, they said I couldn't leave it with her. So it was a laptop for her to be able to possibly Skype and do schoolwork with us. Um, and then I had to take it home. I would bring my computer for us to do work with, but I couldn't leave her a laptop to, to Skype. And nobody ever, um, all that time they were there, nobody could ever tell me If there was ever anybody helping her. So and, and, and why, 
So I have Marie Pereira still with me and Miguel Custodio. And I'm going to ask you, Marie, first, when you listen to the teacher, does it give you any insight as to, you know, the state of mind of Beata, the mother, or, you know, any insight as to what was actually going on at the hospital while she was trying to teach Maya? I think this testimony is very impactful because to me it, it brings home uh, the feeling that no one was really looking out for this child. She didn't have a fixed educator to come in to continue her education. No one knew what was going on. It seemed like this child was just in the wind, which made it even more painful for her mother to not get updates, to not be involved, not to be allowed to see her. First thing that comes to my mind, and I'm not a family law specialist, but where is the law guardian here? This child is supposed to be appointed a neutral party to look after her and report to the court. Who's making these decisions? And why is this child being disregarded like this? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm thinking about, Miguel, is the fact that Beata wasn't allowed to see Maya. And I understand that there is some thought that perhaps that it's going to be detrimental to Maya, but what are your thoughts on the mother not being able to see her daughter during this period? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it just goes to show, I think, how the hospital was very, um, you know, it almost seems like they had a personal vendetta against uh, Beata, you know? It, it just seemed that they were going out of their way to make it impossible for her to, you know, have any contact. I mean, it just seems that there's no justification as to why there wouldn't be some kind of arrangement like supervised visitation if there's a concern of abuse or if there's a concern of Beata maybe encouraging this condition as the hospital, you know, is alleging. But why wouldn't you have a supervised visitation, right? And and so it really starts, you know, these this testimony is really starting to make the hospital look like the bad guy here. Yeah, it's interesting. You have to wonder what goes into that overall decision. Well, on cross-examination, the hospital highlighted the learning category that Maya was in during her stay at the hospital and why it was so restrictive. Let's listen to what they had to say. This is the highest level of disability in the school district, is that right? Yes. Meaning um, there's different levels of independence from a student being allowed to come into the class and, and this one is so restrictive that the child's going to be determined that they're not leaving the house. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And, and we saw your signature earlier. I don't need to show it, but you participated in this consultation and decision? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you next about um, uh, joint exhibit, which is in evidence 1073-76. Actually, let's do um, 75 first, please. Um, the, the decision to homebound a student is based on a medical referral. Is that correct? Yes, the homebound is. OK, if you'll scroll a little lower, please. Um, some of the questions on this, for example, number seven, could the student attend school with accommodation and <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, it's blurry, but it says, could the student attend school with accommodations, example, um, second set of books at home or use of a wheelchair on Maya's form, that was checked no by her doctor. Is that right? Yes, that's what this form says. And then the next one below asks if there could be an accommodation. It says, could the student attend school regularly and receive homebound or hospitalization services on an intermittent basis. And that's also checked now. I see that, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next question is what I wanted to ask you about. Is the student, in this case Maya, confined to a home or hospital full-time, homebound or hospitalized? Um, are those services recommended? And that's what Maya was recommended for, is that right? Correct. Okay, so at least as of August, um, 2016, before Maya went to All Children's, the school district on a form that you helped complete and sign were making the representation that Maya was going to be in the most restrictive learning element for this year, meaning she was too sick to even leave the home. True? Objection. 
legal basis? Misstates the evidence. Overruled. Um, I'm sorry, can you ask that again? Sure. According to the classifications for the Sarasota County uh, classifications for homebound, based on the forms that you participated in and based on the medical review, as of August 2016, the school board determined based on the medical information that Maya was unable to leave the home at all to come to school and participate. Is that true? Yes, that's what this school okay. says. All right, Marie, this is going straight to you because we were talking about it a little bit during the break. I mean, do you think that this was a good cross-examination by the hospital? And were they able to establish at least a little bit why education wasn't at the forefront for Maya because of her disability? I think this was an excellent cross-examination because she is not the type of witness that you can't, that you have to handle with kid gloves like that child witness, her brother. She's a teacher. She had a hand in filling out the form that categorized Maya as homebound, hospital-bound, and this had nothing to do with the hospital. So you're here on the stand saying that it was the hospital's fault, all of this alienation, uh, isolation, but you had a hand in filling out the form. So extracting that testimony from her really watered down all that empathy she garnered on direct. That's a great point. And Miguel, do you agree with that? I mean, I definitely think that the questioning that the hospital did, the attorneys for the hospital, was excellent, pointing out not only was it not the hospital who made this determination, but the witness herself was signing this particular form. Absolutely. And I find it a little disingenuous uh, by, the, by the teacher, the witness, how she is answering Yes, that's what the form says. Well, you had a hand in that. Your your writing is on that, right? So uh, I thought it was a, a really good cross-examination. Obviously, the goal of cross is to poke holes into the testimony that has been garnered in direct, and I thought this was a, a good demonstration of that. Yeah, I thought it was excellent cross-examination. Well, we're gonna take a quick break. Come back with us because we're going to tell you more about the Gareth Purse House case. Stay tuned. <laughs> 